You'll often hear representatives of the NRA complain that all we Americans who support gun control want to do is pass new gun laws. And we do. <laughs> we definitely do. But that characterization is a little misleading. Sure, there are lots of proposed gun regulations that we would love to see enacted at the federal level, but there are also a few gun laws that are currently in force that we would like to get rid of. So, in the interest of finding common ground... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I can't even pretend that this is about building bridges with the NRA. Fuck the NRA. Here are three terrible gun laws that need to be repealed ASAP. And by the way, none of these three laws will be the Second Amendment, if that's what you're worried about. Yes, getting rid of the Second Amendment would make regulating firearms in the United States a lot easier, and it certainly wouldn't break my heart, but I'm not going to propose repealing the Second Amendment in this video. So all of you folks watching who regard the Second Amendment as an addendum to the Ten Commandments can relax for now. Anyway, first up, the Firearm Owners Protection Act. Passed by Congress and signed by President Ronald Reagan in 1986, this was the first major legislative victory for the National Rifle Association since it was taken over by right-wing gun fetishists in 1977. The Firearm Owners Protection Act, or FOPA, undermined much of what had been accomplished less than 20 years prior in the Gun Control Act of 1968. FOPA legalized shipping ammunition through the U.S. mail, rescinded the requirement for dealers to keep records on sales of non-armor-piercing ammunition, made it easier to transport firearms across state lines, and banned the federal government from ever creating a database linking firearms to their owners, except in cases of firearms that are part of criminal investigations. There is a national background check system designed to prevent gun purchases by people who are legally prohibited from having guns, but any records generated by that system, by law, have to be destroyed within 24 hours. So, how many guns are out there? Who has them? We don't know! Something else about FOPA, you know how sometimes pro-gun folks will respond to calls for more gun control by saying, there's plenty of gun laws on the books, why don't we just focus on enforcing the gun laws we already have? Well, FOPA made it more difficult for federal agents to enforce existing federal gun laws. Isn't that something? Since the 1940s, enforcing federal firearms laws has been the responsibility of the agency which we now call the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Explosives don't get a letter. The Gun Control Act of 1968 mandated federal licensing of professional firearms dealers and gave the ATF fairly broad powers to ensure that federal firearms licensees were observing all necessary regulations. After the Gun Control Act went into effect, the NRA began complaining that the burden of complying with ATF inspections was driving some gun dealers out of business. Which to me sounds a lot like Philip Morris complaining that federal regulations are driving tobacco distributors out of business. And my response would be exactly the same. Oh yeah? Good. Isn't that the point? But the gun dealers and the people who wanted to buy guns from them and the NRA, which collects membership dues from both groups, didn't see it that way. So in 1986, FOPA mandated that the ATF could only conduct compliance inspections of federally licensed firearm dealers once a year. You hear that, ATF? Stop harassing those poor gun dealers by making sure that they're obeying the law, okay? Once per year is all you get. Leave the merchants of death alone. Before I move on, there is one provision of FOPA that is worth keeping. The act bans the sale of new automatic weapons to civilians. So let's hang on to that. And amend it to also ban semi-automatics. Sorry, never mind. This video is about getting rid of gun laws, not adding new ones. I just couldn't help myself. Anyway, next, the Dickey Amendment. This sneaky little bastard was added to the Omnibus Spending Bill passed by Congress in 1996. It requires, quote, that none of the funds made available for injury prevention and control at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention may be used to advocate or promote gun control. 
The Dickey Amendment is usually interpreted as a ban on the CDC doing research into gun violence, and practically speaking, that's what it's been. The CDC has conducted limited research into gun violence since the adoption of the amendment, but this research has been mostly in relation to other problems, such as domestic abuse or suicide. And because of the amendment, the CDC has been reluctant to commit significant resources to gun violence research projects. The most recent omnibus spending bill, which was just passed last week, is accompanied by a report that clarifies that the CDC is allowed to conduct gun violence research. But the Dickey Amendment remains in effect. That means that if the CDC does study gun violence and finds evidence that gun control measures would help to address the problem, it still can't advocate for gun control. Even if the data show that gun control would be a good thing, the CDC is prohibited by law from supporting it. Thanks, Congressman Dick E. He was a Republican, by the way. Did I need to tell you that? And finally, laws preventing the destruction of confiscated guns. This last one isn't a single federal law, but rather several state laws, all of which either encourage or in some cases require police departments to sell confiscated firearms rather than destroy them. Police departments around the country accumulate tens of thousands of guns every year. These guns are seized during busts, collected as evidence during criminal investigations, or voluntarily turned in during buyback or amnesty programs. In many cases, these guns are eventually destroyed. But 11 states, Arizona, Georgia, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, Montana, North Carolina, North Dakota, Texas, Tennessee, and West Virginia have laws that push police departments to sell the guns and in some cases prohibit police departments from destroying confiscated or recovered guns. Hopefully the foolishness of laws that discourage or prohibit the destruction of confiscated guns is obvious. Guns that are destroyed can't hurt anybody. Guns that are put back into circulation can be used to shoot and kill people. And by the way, that has already happened at least a few times. In an article published a few years ago, CNN Money documents four cases where guns which had been seized by law enforcement and sold off were used in serious crimes, including a 2010 shooting at the Pentagon that was committed using a gun that had been confiscated by the Memphis Police Department in 2005 and sold to a gun dealer in 2008. The NRA claims that destroying confiscated guns is wasteful because those guns could be sold to law-abiding citizens, but something tells me the NRA is less interested in looking out for the law-abiding gun owners or aspiring gun owners, God help us, and more interested in doing right by the gun dealers who can acquire firearms from police sales at much lower prices than they could elsewhere. After all, it was the plight of the poor, persecuted gun dealers which the NRA cited when it objected to the effects of the Gun Control Act of 1968 and oversaw the gutting of the ATF's enforcement power with the passage of FOPA in 1986. The easier it is to make money selling guns, the more gun dealers there will be. The more gun dealers there are, the more people's livelihoods will depend on people buying and selling guns. The more that happens, the more the NRA can paint gun control efforts as attacking hard-working, law-abiding Americans. Anyway, there you go. Gun control isn't just about passing new regulations. Ultimately, it's about reducing the number of gun-related deaths. New federal gun laws will necessarily be a big part of that, and I hope we start passing some soon. It'll be a nice change of pace. But getting rid of laws that serve to benefit gun dealers and the NRA at the expense of everyone else is also necessary. So let's do that too. Repealing the laws I've described in this video won't be enough, but it would make a pretty good start.